Try this again. Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. So I am recording this video on December 12th and scheduling to post it at the end of next week, right before Christmas. I'm trying to get all of my end of the year videos out before New Year's Eve so I can enjoy the holidays with my family and friends. Um, today's video is top 10 movies of 2023. At number one, we have <clears throat> Matilda the Musical. I watched Matilda the Musical at my parents' house on Netflix and the musical version is just as good as the original movie from the 90s. It has Danny DeVito and Mara Wilson in it. Um, my favorite songs from Matilda the Musical are Revolting Children and When I Grow Up. Um, so if you have not seen Matilda the Musical yet, please check it out on Netflix. The next movie I wanted to talk about is Barbie. My I saw Barbie in July with my mother, my sister, and my cousins Jessica and Violet from New Jersey for my mother's birthday. Um, we gave this movie an A minus, and we love the whole theme of it of women's empowerment. And um, my favorite character was probably Ryan Gosling as Ken. Um, and my favorite scene was the monologue that America Ferrer, the speech that America Ferrera gives to Barbie about like trying to like boost her confidence when she has her mental breakdown. And I just, I think that quote <coughs> is very inspiring and it should be on merchandise for the movie. So I hope the people who are in charge of making merchandise for the Barbie movie put that quote on their merchandise because I would definitely buy it. The next movie I wanted to talk about today is Pixar's Elemental. Um, Matt and I watched this on Disney Plus about a month ago and we loved it. Um, it's basically an immigrant story slash modernized version of Romeo and Juliet with the elements. Um... Ember from the fire colony falls in love with Wade from the water colony. And Wade was my favorite character. I really liked how he put a put in the perspective that it's okay for guys to be emotional. Because sometimes I think that guys are afraid to like show emotion with each other or show like affection. So, because, like, that was something that was brought up in Friends too, as, like, a, a serious issue in Miss Mojo's video, which I never understood, really, why that was counted as a serious issue. Like, I guess it might be a serious issue for guys, because they have issues with being affectionate towards each other. And that was what that part of the video for Miss Mojo about serious issues in Friends was highlighting, and it... It basically talks about how Joey and Chandler's friendship was unique because they weren't afraid to hug each other and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> um, the next movie. Oh, so for ratings, Matilda and Barbie both got an A minus. Elemental got a B plus. The next movie I wanted to talk about is the live action Little Mermaid movie. Now, my opinions on the live action Disney movies vary. It depends on the movie. <coughs> Most of the live action Disney movies get A's and B's. But three live action movies I didn't particularly like. They are The Jungle Book because the animals look too like animatronic. Mulan because they took all the music out of it and they didn't have Mushu and it was just like a boring war movie. 
and um, <sighs> The Lion King. The Lion King seemed too much like a nature documentary from National Geographic instead of a live-action Disney movie. So I didn't really enjoy that movie. Now, we gave The Little Mermaid an A- minus because I think it captures all the essence of the original Disney cartoon with the original music by Alan Menken, but it also throws in some... Some new songs by Lin-Manuel Miranda from Hamilton and Moana and In the Heights. So I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. Um, I really liked how Prince Eric's live action character looked a lot like the cartoon character of Prince Eric. He, um, and my favorite characters were Ariel <coughs> Sebastian, who is voiced by David Diggs from Hamilton, and Scuttle, who is voiced by Aquafina. And we gave live action Little Mermaid an A minus. The next movie I wanted to talk about is Mafia Mama. No, I'm not really into mafia movies like The Godfather or anything like that, but this is more of a comedic movie, which has Tony Collette in the lead female role. And it's basically about this woman who becomes part of the mafia when her grandfather passes away. So she moves to Italy to be part of the mafia. And there's a lot of suspense and drama. <coughs> but also comedy too. So those three aspects of the movie really balanced each other out well. Um, I found myself waiting on the edge of my seat to see what was going to happen next. Very suspenseful. Um, so my friend Kate and I gave this movie a B plus, And I... Hope it's on streaming services soon because I would definitely watch it again. Um, the next movie is Murder Mystery 2. This movie came out on Netflix on March 31st and stars Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler. And let me just say that I have seen a few other movies that have them in it and they pair off very nicely together as a couple in the movies that they are in. Um, and also, they're two of my favorite actors anyway. I have been fans of them for many, many, many years. Um, what... What we... What now, we I talked about Murder Mystery 2 in my top 20 mo movies with Friends actors in them ranking. And in that list, which I have next to me, I believe Murder Mystery 2 was at, like, number six. Let me just find it. All right, so I can't find the listing because I, I recently redid my <sighs> cumulative ranking. Nope, that's not it. Cumulative 
limited Christmas movies. Where is it? Maybe it's in my notes. Is it in my notes? All right, I can't find my original list of friends. Oh, I know where it is. I know where it is. Sorry about that. I just remembered where I put it. So on my top 20, uh, <clears throat> on my top 20, ranking of movies with friends actors in them um murder mystery 2 came in at number six and on this list of movies that we saw in 2023 actually i think it also came in at number six let me just get that list back again i had to switch to a different um i had to switch uh find my uh other lists on a different app, so my apologies. So yes, um, Murder Mystery 2 ranks in the same spot um, on both lists at number 6 for top movies of 20, top 10 movies of 2023 and top 20 movies with friends actors in them. Um, other top ranked movies that have Jennifer Aniston in them now are in our list were Marley and Me, The Iron Giant, and um, Just Go With It. Um, and uh, the next movie on our list of top 10 movies of 2023 is The Man with the Golden Arm. Matt and I watched this movie as part of our serious issues in the media series that we did from august to november it's a movie from 1955 that has frank sinatra in it about substance use disorder and i use this movie as like an educational springboard because i obviously read matthew perry's memoir friends lovers and the big terrible thing and learned about his substance use disorder and i didn't know much about that disease so the reason why I wanted to watch The Man with the Golden Arm was because I wanted to, because I watched a video on Miss Mojo about top 20 movies that tackled serious issues. I believe The Man with the Golden Arm was at, <coughs> like, in their top 20 list, I think, that The Man with the Golden Arm was in, like, 10 top 10 or top 5, I would have to go back and rewatch the video again to remind myself where in their ranking this movie fell because I haven't watched it in a while. But, um, so, in this movie, Frank, Sinatra char Frank Sinatra's character, Frankie, has substance use disorder and <coughs> it basically tells a story about how his disease impacts his relationship with his family and his friends similar to what Matthew Perry talks about in his book um as a side story um his wife who is in a wheelchair is actually faking her disability and comes out as a fraud at the end of the movie sorry for the spoiler but I just have to talk about how much this bothered me because as somebody who has a disability, I just did not think that it was a good representation as a disabled person that this character was faking her disability the whole entire movie. She was basically in a wheelchair for the whole entire movie. And then at the very end, she reveals that she can walk and that she was able to walk the whole entire time. Which made me really, really mad. Um, so the next, the next movie I wanted to talk about is also on my 
top 20 movies list with friends actors in them and it is a movie i have sung the praises of in two other videos it is called the ron clark story and on my top 20 on my top 10 list for movie scene in 2023 it comes in at number eight and it comes in at number one on my top 20 list of movies with friends actors in them this movie came out in 2006 it stars matthew perry as the titular ron clark who was a teacher <coughs> who works with a group of juvenile delinquent fifth graders and he inspires them to work hard to achieve academic success it's a very powerful and very emotional story uh originally when we first watched this movie back in the spring we ranked it a b plus but after re-watching this movie and really thinking about the power and emotion behind the story how good matthew perry's acting was and how emotional the scene was where his student gets thrown out of his house um, because his dad is really abusive and Mr. Clark finds him in the alley and like comforts him and ends up bringing him to live with the principal. I just, I thought to myself today as I was preparing to get my thoughts together for my other video I just made about top 10 books of 2023 that um, I would change the ranking of the Ron Clark story from B plus to A minus just because of everything I just said about how emotional the story was about how great Matthew Perry's acting was about how great the acting of all of the child actors was about the emotional story between the kid living with an abusive parent and getting thrown out of his house but something that really bothered me is that you never know if the dad who is abusive towards his kid gets arrested or not you're left to assume that but Basically, the kid goes to live with the principal, but you don't know what happens with the dad. I'm assuming that he went to jail, and I'm really hoping that's what happened, but nothing is ever stated. Um, so the, at number nine in our list, in my list of top 10 movies from 2023 is Miracle on 34th Street. This is the version from 1998 with Mara Wilson from Matilda and Mrs. Doubtfire and Dylan McDermott from Three to Tango. Um, Miracle on 34th Street is probably one of my favorite Christmas movies and, I think my favorite scene is probably the scene when the guy who's playing Santa Claus is on trial and Mara Wilson's character talks to the judge about how she didn't originally believe in Santa, but now she does. And it's very sweet. That whole scene in the courtroom is sweet when the kids are coming to Santa's defense about how he's actually real and how he's not faking being Santa, which I think is really sweet. Um, so I think that Miracle on 34th Street and Three to Tango were released in the same year. I'm pretty sure that's what happened because Dylan McDermott was also in Three to Tango with Matthew Perry and Neve Campbell, who was also on screen with Courtney Cox. Um, and 
Um, Three to Tango, I believe, came out in, like, May. And then Miracle on 34th Street came out in December. So I think Dylan McDermott is another actor from a movie with a Friends actor in them that I want to see more movies about because... Or see more movies with him in them, I should more better say. The next movie I wanted to talk about is Wish. I have made a dedicated shorter video reviewing Wish, so I don't want to go into it too much here. But um, we gave this movie a B+. Plus. Um, one thing I did not mention in my review is that my favorite song basically is called Knowing What I Know Now, and it's the scene that's at the end where Asha and her friends and the queen are all rallying against Magnifico. And that song, I don't know if anybody else who has seen this movie, who has reviewed it already, like the people at Wicked Binge or Saber Spark or... Um... Whoever else has reviewed this movie. Oh, I think Mysterious Mr. Enter also has reviewed it. So for any of the other reviewers who have reviewed this movie, did any of you guys also get vibes from this song, Knowing What I Know Now, of Do You Hear the People Sing from Les Miserables? I don't know if it's because I'm really into musical theater, but I sure did. Um, so yes, please go watch my designated review of Wish because I talk about more why we ranked it the way we did. We gave it a B plus. Please just, just so I don't sound repetitive, just go watch the video with my review. Um, and my favorite characters were Asha and Queen Amaya. And for honorable mentions, we have A Man Called Ove. We saw this movie before we moved to Maine as our, like, grand farewell activity that we did with our friends from New Hampshire before we moved. Um, this movie is definitely one of the most powerful performances that Tom Hanks has ever done in a movie. So if you have not seen this movie yet, please go read it. The book that the movie is based on is also very good. I read that a couple of years ago during COVID-19 isolation, and it was fantastic. So please check that out if you get the chance. <clears throat> um, the, next, the next honorable mention is Scream. Scream came... The original, so Scream is a series of like six or seven movies. It's a franchise. The original movie from the franchise came out in 1996. It stars Neve Campbell from Three to Tango and Courtney Cox from Friends. Um, so we watched this whole movie all the way through last night and it was good to finally finish it because when we watched it on TV at the end of September, we did not get to finish watching it because Friends was on at 9 o'clock and there was an episode that I really wanted to watch. But we watched it till the end. And first of all, I was not scared because by watching a Miss Mojo video when I was originally watching the movie about horror movie villains, I basically knew what the ending was and I knew who the killer was. So I wasn't, I was, I, I knew what was going to happen, basically, because I knew who the villain was the whole entire time. Um, and I really think that it was stupid that they were continued, that they were able to continue to go on with their prank for so long, because the principal catches them at the beginning of the movie and tells them to stop, but they don't. It's so stupid. Like, it's such a... That's such a dumb thing for them to do. To 
actually get called out for their behavior, but then they don't stop it and they continue it. But I guess there wouldn't be much of a movie if they got arrested. But, so, when I started to watch this movie when it was on AMC at the end of September, I originally went into the movie not liking Courtney's Courtney Cox's character, Gail Weathers, very much. I thought she was a really big bitch to Neve Campbell's character, Sydney Prescott, because she was a newscaster who was also an author who wrote a book about the murder of the mother from the year before and made a big profit off of the book sales of the murder of Sydney's mother, which is kind of really mean. But um, her newscasting partner person who like carries the video camera is one of the person who gets killed by the murderer. Spoiler alert, sorry if you haven't seen it. I'm assuming that if you're a fan of horror movies, you have probably seen Scream before. But I don't mean to spoil what happens for people who haven't seen it. Um, so basically, when it gets closer to the end of the movie, Courtney Cox um, comes to Sydney's house to confront Billy and Stu, who were the people who were committing all the murders. And he, she basically, like, bitches them out, which I really loved. Like, I went into this movie hating Gail Weathers, and then I went, I got to the end, and I really liked her. And I would really, the only reason why I would watch the rest of the series is to see how her character arc develops further. But honestly, I don't know if I'm going to watch the rest of these movies, because... One thing I hated about them was all the blood and gore. I just I just can't stand that kind of stuff. <coughs> uh, so we gave Scream a B minus. Um, the next honorable mention is just not he's just not that into you. As I said in my top twenty video of movies with friends actors in them, um, we gave this movie a B. Um. My, uh, and as I said before, my favorite story arc in this movie is Jennifer Aniston and Ben Affleck. I think they're just a really solid, cute, sweet couple. And then... Um, if they were to make a spin-off movie of that, movie I would actually like to see a movie that just focuses on them because they were my favorite couple in the movie um and finally my last honorable mention is Numb which again I talked about in my top 20 top 20 movies with friends actors in them um Numb came in at number 15. We watched this movie last week. It has Matthew Perry in it. It came out in 2009. Um, and one of the hardest scenes to watch is the scene at the beginning of the movie. The opening scene, he's in the bathtub. And as you all know, Matthew Perry passed away in his hot tub. So that scene was really hard for me to watch. And I almost didn't want to watch the rest of the movie because of that scene. But I powered through it. Um, it was good. Much like his performance in the Ron Clark story. It was a very powerful performance. It was another case where I learned a lot about a disorder or disability that I didn't know much about. In this case, the disorder that they are talking about is depersonalization. Which is basically where... You have experiences outside of your body and you have trouble relating to people. And also he has social anxiety. Um, so in a way, his character is similar to Chandler's character because he has trouble with anxiety in relationships. Um, but he's not like Chandler because he has a depersonalization disorder, which makes him have trouble relating to people even more because he has a lot of experiences out of his body. So yeah, we gave that movie a B minus because it was one of Matthew Perry's stronger strongest performances. Um and like 
as people know, he was more known for his comedic acting because of Friends. But movies like The Ron Clark Story and Numb and Seventeen Again give his acting resume like a more rounded out um profile because you can see that he's also a good dramatic actor as well as a comedian um so yes um did you see any of these movies if you did what did you like about them would you rank them the same what movies did you see that you would recommend for us to see next year please leave a comment below have a great day